and good afternoon. Welcome to Today at the Races, presented by Fidelity First. I'm Stanton Salter, along with Keith Fustel. Closing day of the big summer meet today here at Laurel Park. We have some beautiful weather for you. We'll be fast and firm. Nice carryover in that rainbow pick six. That's over 18,000 starts in race five today. Mandatory payout. We'll talk more about all that in a second, but a big uh, Maryland Pride day right. yesterday. We had a big crowd. I saw the uh, the uh, Maryland Jockey Club polo give giveaways. That was a snazzy little snazzy little uh, polo shirt mm -hmm. that they were giving away yesterday, and some big uh, performances. How about the seven-year-old Sonny Inspired with a big win to kick off the stakes action yesterday in the yeah. Ben's Cat. We talked about him on the early show as as, as a price user. He had major excuses, and his only two. Well, his most recent, I should say, right. uh, turf starts. But he's had a lot of success over this turf course and got a heated battle up front. Yeah, but they, uh, I think the two leaders opened up eight or nine lengths on the rest of the field around the turn and uh, went out got it through sizzling fractions, and it set up nicely. Sonny Inspired got the first run. English yep. Minister a little too late, yep. along with Grandiflora. Yep, and a big day for Dale Capuano. He won three races mm -hmm. yesterday, including one of the stakes with Rocky Policy in the Jamil. Good to see Rocky Policy win for Vermillion. That, that, that gave uh, Dale Capuano a pretty big day yesterday. Oh, yeah, 13th time on the turf was a charm. Finally yep. got the win yep. and run fast, come out of some better races, and uh, we talked about that as well. There wasn't a lot of speed. Took the initiative right. in that race and got it done. And some good three-year-old performances yesterday. The uh, Pecorero three-year-old, uh, where she told me to go. Now he's won his last three, including two stakes right here at Laurel Park. And a real impressive performance by the motion three-year-old, Philly Majestic Reason, uh, up the rail, kind of Zig and zagging through uh, through a company mm -hmm. late there, but uh, she's a nice looking filly. Yeah, I think she'll stretch out okay. I mean, they kind of came back late as yeah. the rally went awfully fast. I think it was a sub 22 opening quarter, rebroke from the challengers at the quarter pole, just got really weary late, kind of forcing uh, Majestic Reason to kind of alter course back to the outside and got it done. So. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I, and maybe she's a one-run sprinter. Maybe she'll stretch out. We're right. going to we're gonna find out in the future. So so big winners on the track yesterday. Some big winners in our Champions Handicapping mm -hmm. Tournament yesterday. Congratulations to the first place finisher, Jeffrey Harriman of Baltimore, Maryland. He won uh, with a bankroll of a little over 2,200. So he, he chose a berth to the Breeders' Cup betting challenge, and uh, his, his uh, purse money was almost 2,800. So a big day for Jeffrey Harriman. Yeah. Harriman of Baltimore, Maryland. Sean Nolan from Alexandria, Virginia. He was second. And then John Casoris from Towson, Maryland. Okay. He was fourth and uh, he was third. And then Gary White, uh, Gary Wright from uh, Staten Island was fourth. So a uh, uh, big uh, big turnout yesterday for the Champions yeah, Handicap. Uh, very tournament. good. And uh, I, say, I think my man, I'm assuming Kevin Sweeney from the Towson area and, and a little fifth. link there. Yeah, used to yep. used to bartend at the Harriman House back in the day. So I'm hoping that's my buddy Sweeney put in a good effort in the Champions Tournament. All right, so good stuff yesterday. Good stuff today on closing day. Looks like Claudio Gonzalez has the trainer's title wrapped up and Javion Toledo is mm -hmm. going to be the leading rider. We'll keep you updated on that. But there's the big story for today. Mandatory payout and the 20 cent rainbow pick six. That's going to start race five today on the 10 race program. It all must go. Man Mandatory payout for the pick six. We'll start with over 18,000 carryover. I have a ticket. You should have a ticket. Everybody should have a ticket today for the pick six. I think it might get up around 100,000, right? As a mandatory, yeah, would not surprise me at all. Let's get it up there, 80, 80 90, 100,000. And so it'll be a mandatory mm -hmm. payout. Well, you know, the early pick five is always a mandatory payout. The late pick five today will As be a well. mandatory payout. Uh, the rolling super high five in the last race will be a mandatory payout uh, as, as, as well as uh, everything. So there, there's the board. Mandatory payouts on rainbow pick six, late pick five, and super high five today so closing day of the meet gives you some good action let's get right to it let's show you a picture of both track surfaces will be fast and firm two perfect playing fair tracks to close off the meet today oh yeah fast and firm we're ready to go it's and like uh, the roll on the inside of uh, both the uh, turf courses yeah, they there. Were, uh, i just noticed they were kind of scraping the inside but the the tractor was going the other way on the dirt course uh, okay so that's, that's a little interesting there. Yeah, right around 80, sunny. Beautiful day for racing to finish off this summer. I mean, we need some shipping money. Yeah, we, we do. We need some money to go play at the Big T. At the Big T. All right, well, All let's right. get right to it here. Race one will kick off the rolling super high five in race one. That's a low 15% takeout for the super high five. No carryover. 
Uh, we'll, we'll have that every race with seven or more, the rolling super high five. Also, race one, we kick off the early pick five, and the, the early pick five, always a mandatory payout, industry low 12% takeout on both your pick fives here at Laurel Park. Let's take a look at race one. Claiming 16,000 for Philly Mares, three and up. Never won two lifetime. We're going a mile and a 16th on the Fort Marcy turf course with the rail at 87 feet. I go with the five, my top pick here, Bodega Bay for trainer Anthony Ferrier. Victor mm -hmm. Carrasco will ride his three-year-old daughter of Bodie Meister. An okay third at this level. Last out, that was on a tiring, yielding turf mm -hmm. course. I think she might be a little bit better on a firm turf course. That's what she'll get today. This will be her third race back this summer after having a little time off uh, late spring. I like the five, Bodega Bay with Victor Carrasco in the opener. I'm pretty sure the speeds, and that was, for the most part, the only I, I think that was the only race on that turf course that day where the kind of speeds just went around the racetrack. Uh, the other race was all quick-witted, came wide from far back. Uh, but, yeah, the speeds kind of went around the track on that July 28th race. I do like Bodega Bay to sustain a run. There might even be a little bit more speed in here. Uh, you've got a stretch-out horse in the four. Flashy and dynamite might force the issue. I'm going to try to blow things up in the opener with the three beyond forever. 36 to 1 beating a pole last time out of that same race. The time before that was first off the layoff. Nowhere to be found. Worked out well. Why do you keep up with a with a five year old mare like this? Is this is realistically really her form? The blinkers go back on. Uh, she's got a has got some hang in her seven seconds. But you go back to her races on the turf uh, last summer in the fall. Third behind so innocent. A good second behind participate. Those are allowance and starter allowance type of so runners. Yep. One final shot for Beyond Forever. She looked good warming up uh, in that return try July 6th. I bet a couple bucks at 12 to 1. Didn't fire at all. I think the blinkers are going to wake her back up. Uh, connections maybe shooting for, for a price here. Uh, we're going to go back into the barn of Robbie Bales. Right. And they're all, you know, I guess it's one and the same. Peach Wisdale, all the Virginia connections there with Beyond Forever. Well, she ran well in the Bales barn last year. Now back mm -hmm. in Robbie's barn today. She'll be a big price. The blinkers go on for us, boys. So uh, go on with it. You're trying to take down the yeah, early, early, why not? pick five today. Well, why not? You get a long shot <coughs> home like that, and uh, you'll be one of the few tickets uh, to have it. So, all right, Keith with a long shot on top here in the opener. We both like the 10 on the outside. Mm -hmm here who's the 10 the 10 Capucine. Capucine. Capucine, yep. doesn't like the win but mm -hmm. she uh, she'll get a check at this level Daniel Centeno uh, will be a uh, be aboard today Centeno with a big day yesterday he won two stakes and he rode this Philly last out a good second at this level on a yielding turf course sure. uh, that was one, one of her best uh, most recent efforts last out for the 10 yeah she fits no doubt about it she's gonna stay around here she's gonna stay the trip once again uh, seven seconds from 17 tries. Maybe just put the, the three and the 10 in the second hole and hope you hit it. Right. That's what they like to do. So, yep. uh, All right, it's a nice turf route there to kick things off in the opener. Race two kicks off the early pick fours, three pick fours we offer you in the afternoons here at Laurel Park. We're going six furlongs on the main track, claiming 5,000 Philly Mares, three and up, having won a race in six months. Mm -hmm. The three, Southern Peach for the Red Hot. Dale Capuano, he had three wins yesterday. The seven-year-old Mares in good form. She's a two-time winner at Laurel Park, a good second against Beat Nickel Company mm -hmm. at Delaware last out. Weston Hamilton gets aboard today. I think Dale finishes off a strong closing weekend with mm -hmm. the win here with the three, Southern Peach. It's hard to get past them you know, the two favorites in here, the three or the four. Uh, they could even be tighter when it's all said and done at the betting windows. I, I do think Southern uh, Peach is the speed of the speed. I know reward the Gypsy has the speed. Guess what? That horse is now scratched. We don't have to worry about that. I, I think Southern Peach can zip right to the front, go ahead and control it, has some races back on the page over this dirt course. It certainly work, and that was against better company. Gimme Kimmy reunited with Pino. We'll make a move from mid-pack. All right, so we like the uh – the same four horses here. The four, Gimme mm -hmm. Kimmy with 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 Pino. Uh, just okay, it was was in good was in good form before that last race. Didn't run very well. Going seven eighths last out. Mm -hmm. Cuts back to six furlongs yep. here today. All right. All right. Turn the page here. Race three. A nice maiden claiming sixteen thousand. Mile and a sixteenth on the bowl game turf course rail at seventeen feet. Maiden sixteen for Philly and Mares. I go to the outside. We both like the eleven here. Rag top. 
for Rudy Rodriguez. Horacio Caramanos on this three-year-old filly by Union Rank. She's taking a big drop here today. Yeah. Uh, she's dropping from maiden special weight, maiden 40,000 up there in New York. Her, uh, her, her best two races were on the turf. Mm -hmm. uh, one at Santa Anita last fall in Belmont earlier this summer against much tougher company. Yeah. A big class relief today for the 11. Yeah, that's the key. I, I don't think she's a single in any way, shape, or form right. in your, in your multi-race wagers. But the blinkers go back on. They took it, took the blinkers off last time out on the dirt. She really didn't fire at all. And, and it's 40 to 1, two races back in that maiden special way, June 17th. Yeah, double key race to see the first and third race. Oh, first and third horses came back to win. The ninth place finisher came back, went out west to Del Mar and ran a good third with a buyer of 71. Clearly better company. Negative here, Rudy Ride. He's only one for 12 with his turf runners the last couple of years at, at Laurel Park. So th that kind of makes me think I I'm, I'm going to spread a little bit further in the multi-race uh, wages. I think Janelle Dreams shedding a little weight is your price play to make a run from well back. And we both like the four as well. Jacob Bella, J.D. Acosta on this filly for Mike Trombetta. She's dropping mm -hmm. from Maiden 25. She has a couple turf routes under her belt. She ran okay for Maiden 25. Finds an easier group mm -hmm. here today. Yeah, her and the one, Daniela. Really kind of hard to separate when you break it all down. Chaco Bella, I thought, would have a little bit more. She ran well when caught wide every step of the way, two races back. I want to see a little bit more finish. This little subtle drop is the right move to do, especially for her and the one that might enhance that late run. All right, let's keep going here. Let's uh, speed through these early okay. races. We're going to spend a bunch of time on the uh, rainbow pick six. You like the late pick four mm -hmm. today. Race four kicks off the middle pick four, five and a half furlongs on the Fort Marcy turf course rail at 87 feet, claiming 7,500, three and up, wide open condition here in the fourth race. We have a video spotlight on the two. Scalson is going to be a heavy favorite mm -hmm. here in race four. Here's the race from July 7th at Laurel Park at this level. Yeah, and just sitting there with a, with a mitt full around the turn uh, with Scout Sonner, the four horse that day. A little bit of a dual setup shifts out. Hey, you, you see the short comment, Keen, and no doubt about it. Kieran and Kelly and the rest of the crew, they, they, they do as good a work with these older horses as anybody around or even in the country. They've got this horse feeling really, really good right now. Look at that spurt that this horse showed uh, yeah. from the 316s past the eighth pole to win going away. Still had something reserved. You see the short comment there, ridden out, has some speed to target, and it's not – Super quality speed as well. I, I think if he holds form, uh, he, he's going to be awfully short in that three to five range now that part of that entry is scratched. He could even be one to two. And you get Rosario yeah. Montanez back aboard. Montanez and Caron, they're four for ten recently with a positive ROI. Montanez, nice win yesterday on that Dorothy Wharton uh, first off the claim yeah. for Wasabi. So Montanez having a good summer meet. We both have scouts on her on top. I go up to seven. Rodini in my exact. He had a big win at 44. Four to one, two back mm -hmm. against 16,003 life. Went to the front last out on a good turf course against starter allowance for life. Got a little tired. Uh, th this isn't really a drop. Might be actually tougher company today. Right. Uh, but you get seven pounds off with the apprentice a uh, a Antonio Quills. This horse has speed. Uh, Four-year-old by Bernardini. I think he gets a good trip mm -hmm. early on here and then could just hang around to get a piece of yeah, it. Yeah, trying to, trying to save a piece is right. He's going to have to deal uh, with a one Starship Thor if that one kind of breaks alertly. He's yeah. awfully quick. Comes out what I think maybe a little bit better races at Delaware Park uh, compared to the rest of the field. Save Scouts Honor. So Scouts Honor, an awfully short price. Maybe your horse that you like last time, Private Tutor. I think he used this horse at a price last time, Stan. Yeah, he did, just yeah. didn't fire. Yeah. He three races back in the spring, was able to get up and beat Bobcat. Uh, you know, uh, you know, that wasn't a bad field last time. That was a good turf course. Back to firmer ground today. I think he could kind of wake back up get and a make a run it. into it. Yeah, and, and even Marcakis on the turn back in distance. Yep. Uh, yeah, I like the four a little bit here with Cali Francois. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. I jumped off Private Tutor today. Watch him jump up right. and bite me. I like, just like when I I jumped off Roby's boy. Here comes Roby's right. boy. Right. Well, now Nothing we know we're going to save with them now. We, right. We've got time. They haven't opened with the windows. Well, they have opened them, but yet, you know we're not in race four. You got plenty of time. All right. Save her on Private Tutor <laughs> there in the fourth. Let's get a quick commercial right. break. When we come back, nice carryover today in that Rainbow Pick Six. It's over eighteen thousand. It's a mandatory payout. We'll take a look right after this. When it comes to getting back in the game, there's only one team to turn to. The team more high school, collegiate, and professional athletes train and recover with. That team is MedStar Sports Medicine. 
For more than 30 years, MedStar has served as a leader in the diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation of orthopedic and sports-related injuries. Ranked among the top programs in the Maryland and Washington regions, we offer rapid access to athletes of all levels. Let the pros who treat the pros treat you. MedStar Sports Medicine. All right, welcome back to 20 Cent Rainbow Pick 6. It's going to be a popular one here today at Laurel Park. It's a mandatory payout on our closing day of the summer meet. There's the carryover. We're going to start with 18072 bucks. This will be well played. I'm thinking it'll be up around 100000 today when it's all said and done. Starts in race five, a very wide open maiden two-year-old Phillies for 40000 I hit the all button mm -hmm. in race five. Let's take a look at my ticket, a $56 play. I'm going to play it today. I'm not I'm not messing around <laughs> in race five. I'm, I'm hitting the all button, look, hoping for a little bit of a price here in race five, knock some people out here in the first leg. So I go all race five. Race six is a tough maiden special mm -hmm. weight going a mile on the bowl game turf course. I uh, like the Michael Dickinson entry in there. The, the two Scaramucci should be tough in there. Also, I like the, uh, the six in there, Drossel Moon, big price for Susan Cooney. And I like the nine in there, Crazy Magic by Magician for Trez Abbott. Uh, so maybe I'll get a price home there in race six. I'm going to single on a popular favorite in race seven, Holiday Magician for Mary Epler and Joan Rosado. Four to five there in race seven. I'm going to single on that filly, not going to try to beat Holiday Magician today. Race eight is a 16,000 claimer, five and a half on the Fort Marcy. I like a price play of the day in there. The 10, my Vixen, cutting back mm. in distance today for Gary Capuano and Victor Carrasco. I like the 10, my Vixen. The five, why you ask, is going to be a popular favorite in there, so I think you have to use the five and the 10. Another key horse I'm going to use in race nine. That's a nice two other than allowance feature of the day for Philly and Mares, five and a half on the bowl game. I'm going to single on the five, elusive Joni there for Gary Capuano. Alex Centron will ride. This mare has been in good form recently. She just missed at this level, sprinting on the turf, two back at Delaware. I think elusive Joni gets the money today at a, at a nice price, maybe a $9 winner there mm -hmm. for me with elusive Joni okay. in race nine. Race 10, there's a very suspect favored there in race 10. A lot of people are going to use the 11 Kid Jeter, but he's been the beaten favored three of his last starts. Uh, I, I do use the 11 Kid Jeter. I don't pick him in my top four. Mm -hmm. I use him protectively here in the in, in the tenth race. I use four other horses, though. I like better than him, the two, five, six, seven. The yeah. six is my top pick in that last race. Uh, the six, City Gold for Kieran McGee is my top pick at three to one there in race 10. So I have some prices yeah. on my ticket. It's a mandatory payout. It all must go today in the Rainbow Pick Six. Yeah, uh, looking at your ticket, uh, yeah, I like the approach, except that that I think Holiday Magician looks like if there's any single in that whole stretch, that looks like the one. But, man, you're going to have to run a third race. He's run two really good races for yeah. Mary now, I think, believe off a little bit of a layoff. The only stranger in there may be the first time Mark Reed horse, if I, if I went too deep in there. And in my late pick four, I single Mary, but I I, I do fear that that th I believe it's the three horse in there, Stan, isn't it? Uh, La Zavoya. Yeah, yeah, just kind of the new face uh, yes. amongst these other ones that we've seen kind of running in this uh, two in life uh, condition. But other than that, yeah, the last race is definitely a spread race yep. with Kid Jeter, a horse that likes to run second. You got to invest, but like you say, it's it must go today. Yep. So 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 jump on in. Maybe invest a little bit more than you usually do. All right, let's try to get a hundred thousand yeah. in this pick six mm -hmm. today. I think you got to go deep here in race five. Maiden claiming forty thousand for two-year-old fillies five eights on the main track. Some well-bred first-time starters in here. The three we both go with the three on top. Little Miss Raylan, first-time starter from the Jeremiah Englehart barn. Some Maryland-bred two-year-old filly by Super ninety-nine. Mm -hmm. That's a new uh, new uh, freshman sire stands up there at Country Life Farm. The damn Hello, Helen Louise by Louis Couture. She was okay. She won twice, made over a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, she's been an okay broodmare as well. This filly's a half to hell of a fire. Who's a nice allowance yeah. runner around mm -hmm. here for Tim Woolley? Hell of a mm -hmm. fire has made over a hundred and thirty thousand. So I like the breeding here for the three. A little Miss Rayleigh. Some okay works up there at the Belmont Training Track. Vargas takes the call here on Little Miss Raylan. Oh, Raylan, yeah. You've got, and, and look at this, Stan. You've got the three horse. We both have the top two because I'm. Uh, this just shows you 
the product now that in yep. the Maryland, the Maryland bed program, the Maryland Reds are getting tougher and tougher. When's the last time you you, you seen this? You know, one hundred and thirty five thousand dollar purchase, yeah. one hundred and sixty thousand dollar purchase. You know, we've seen stronger ones for the Maryland Birds, but pointing now to run here and not yeah. go uh, other places. You got an uh, Englehart bringing this horse down. I agree with you. I think I think it's the three or the eight in in this race. They they're both working well. They're both from outfits that win first time out. And and Englehart, I went back. He hasn't. I think he's run one maiden in like the last several years right. in Maryland. Did win with it. Nicholas and me, that was a horse that dropped and then subsequently did well off the claim. But I, I give a slight edge uh, to the three. You move to the outside stand with the eight, Ella Nation. By alternation, wasn't I believe that was a sire of the uh, Bye Bye Birdie, the horse of Hammies for, yep. for Romans that yep. ran big the other day. Nice string of works at Monmouth Park out of a mare. Memories of Mystic. Three for four at the age of two, made 174,000, ran in the low 80s. The only knock on the trainer, I mean, has done well with firsters, 0 for three uh, the past couple of years with two year olds. Hasn't run a lot of two year old first time starters, I should say. So, one, one of these two, I believe, in race five. They're, they're definitely, po they've been pointing for this race. Yeah, Elination, a half to Bridget's Big Love. He's made over 300,000. Yeah, yep. Also, a half to Mystic Love, who's made a. Uh, Made o over 200,000. Her dam, her lone win was a nice maiden special weight yeah. here at Laurel going seven furlongs on the dirt. So we both like the eight. Elination there with the Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. Edgar Prado, the five. That's the way to do it from the Mike Trombetta barn. Pimentel was mm -hmm. aboard for the debut. He's back aboard today. She ran a decent third, a respectable third, breaking from the two hole in a nine horse field. She showed a little speed that day mm -hmm. and hung on for a good third. She has every right to improve today in her second start the five that's the way to do it yeah i might have been wrong there yeah you're right uh elination wasn't the mayor but the, the, the mayor produced mystic love right? right that was three for four at, at the age of two the, yeah was that the franny campitelli horse mystic love that might have been i think that might have been yeah sick. yeah a long shot maybe it's the two faith leatherman for garland farm chalita talking about precocity and the breeding five two-year-old winners you know uh out of this mayor promenade lane uh, one of them was outside lane it was three for six at the age of two. Yep. And nice uh, little race there, race five. The, 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 the four here, I didn't use the four. Try poker, mm -hmm. bred by the Bowmans, by Tri Tap. All the Bowmans do is breed good horses. This, this is why I hit, I hit the all button. Yeah. I think Tim Keefe with two live first time starters, a, a, a Bowman uh, bred horse with the four, Tri Poker, and, and, a, and a Man Fuso, Katie Voss horse with the six, Tuppy's Hacker. T t well, named after Tuppy's yeah. Hacker, probably. T Tuppy's Way. So, yeah. and, and both Keefe horses are nice prices in this race. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the Tri Poker, the four horse, uh, three queens. That mare produced Queen to Checkmate, who's, uh, I think, was two time winner, two for seven at two, moved up into the Claudio Barn off to claim, but I think is still like a five time winner overall with Lake Six that goes on. An interesting move here with Lynch. A look at the jockey trainer combo, the percentages. I didn't realize he's that strong with, with, with Fergal Lynch. 24% yeah. with a strong ROI. Uh, uh, yeah, that is strong. You you have the the two in the mix there, Chulita. Yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, I'll root for the two. That'll be a big price. That's mm -hmm. why I hit the all button here in okay. race five. Yeah. All, all right. right, race six, another nice uh, maiden special weight to kick off the late pick five, industry low, twelve percent takeout on both your pick fives here at Laurel. Mandatory payout on this late pick five today, closing day of the summer meet. A nice maiden special weight going a mile on the bowl game turf course rail at 17 feet here in race six. The one, the keeper, a first time starter for Michael Dickinson by Temple City. That's an up and coming Dynaformer sire. I like the works up there at uh, Michael Dickinson's private training center up there in Cecil County, Maryland, uh, Tapita Farm. Uh, some nice works up there on his turf course up there. So you know this horse is well prepared. Sheldon Russell will ride the one, the keeper, and uh, you like the 1A as well. Yeah. Dob Dob is going to get Mario Pino. You know both uh, Dickinson's horses are well prepared for the oh, turf today. I mean, either one of them. Uh, I mean, he hasn't really had much success, you know, just come back over the last couple of years with the two-year-old firsters. But when I kind of broke it down and, and, and got a little, dug a little deeper in the breeding, yeah, let's talk about the one, uh, the keeper. Uh, is a fool, uh, the fool brother, Archer, Archigelos or whatever, was two for four or two. I think won a graded stakes, uh, grade three stakes in its third start, broke its maiden in its second start going long, uh, I believe on the Laurel turf course and ran up, upwards in the low to mid 80s. Dob Dob had a sharp minister, 
a uh, slew of winning foals. We, we talk about you had a 12-time winner. Uh, Adventist was a two-time winner on the turf. And uh, should also say uh, the keeper is is a half to Big Brown. Oh, sure. looked that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. What he he was okay, right? He was Big all right. <laughs> well, you know, you know, these horses are well yeah. bred. You know, they're well prepared for the turf today. So we both like the Dickinson entry, the two Scaramucci yeah. for Rodney Jenkins. Had a good looking uh, turf debut, five and a half uh, mid July here at Laura mm -hmm. Park. A good third that day to Chattel, That's who the, just yep, came back and galloped in a stake up there at Saratoga mm -hmm. for young Laurel Park base trainer Brandon McFarlane. Getting the money up there with Chattel. So Scaramucci comes out of that race, has a good foundation under him now with that mm -hmm. mile race on the main track. Last out, uh, Scaramucci's going to be awfully tough here in race six. Oh, Brandon McFarlane, that's still, that's that's good up there. In New York. You know, if, if they had a long drive contest, I actually, I play a little bit of golf. And with Brandon? Brandon, I, I, I know one thing. He, any trainers around here or anywhere, he will win the long drive he contest. He can play some golf. He, right. he, he, he can All right. I drive like a, a golf ball. Can sure. I have a couple long shots here in race six. The six Drossel Moon mm -hmm. by Drossel Meyer uh, for trainer Susan Cooney. Weston Hamilton will ride. Has a nice little turf sprint uh, under his belt against Maiden Special Weight. Now goes long in his second start. Not, not out of the question. Mm -hmm. And the nine, Crazy Magic, I think Magician, uh, who won the Breeders' Cup turf at San Anita was second in the Arlington Million. I uh, had just, uh, just a matter of time before he starts throwing some nice turf runners. The nine crazy magic by magician out of a Fusiachi Pegasus mare for Trez Abbott. Some nice works up there. Uh, some okay works up there at Fair Hill. Mm -hmm. Fergal Lynch takes the call, though, on the nine crazy yeah. magic. Yeah, I, I do agree with you with the uh, six Drossel Moon. I think we'll. Slip away at a price is 54 to 1 in debut. Sprint route, though, okay for Susan Cooney. These Drossel Myers are okay uh, stretching out first first time on the turf going long, uh, 13, 14%. This was had a little bit of late life in that sprint. All right, so nice maiden special weight to kick off the late pick five. Keith likes the late pick four mm -hmm. today. That starts in race seven. We have a heavy favorite here in race seven. I want to see how you played your ticket. Did you key on the four holiday did, magician yeah. here in race seven? I did. You there's did. there's your single. If you can go too deep and get a buddy and put together $48, I, I would – throw in the three just for the fact that zero percent barn to a to a higher much higher percentage barn this horse could move up but holly the magician if he hold if she holds for him should win i've got her line too high at four to five i think she's going to be probably uh one to two when it's all said and done but holly the magician got a couple good rides just just a little unlucky it's last two races we go three deep in race eight with the one Four and five i do think why you ask is a little vulnerable there six to five on the line ninth race Price play, the two, Summer Frock along with the 10 Fly. Then we're here we go. We're going to spread like crazy in the last stand. Yep. Two, four, five, six, seven, 10, 11. So we need that single to get home, and I think we're set up perfectly for the last three. A $24 ticket. Even going to throw in uh, Dis uh, Disco Express at a big price, and there was one other one in there, even Broad Expanse, first off the claim, Dorothy Wharton. We saw it again yesterday. Yep. Now about 28 29% with a huge ROI, first off the claim for that barn. So 24 bucks. All right, nice, pick four. nice ticket. One of the pick four pools yesterday, I think the middle pick four, the one you had a ticket for yesterday, that had, that had over 30,000 mm -hmm. bet into it. And we had a big – so you can catch a big score in these pick fours. Yes. Uh, the early pick four yesterday paid over 12,000. Mm -hmm. It was tremendous. <laughs> right. We've had a nice run. Uh, of, of pick fours and pick five payouts at this summer meet. All right, let's take a look at the seventh race. Six furlongs on the main track. Philly Amaris claiming 10,000. Everyone two lifetime. The four holiday magician mm -hmm. were all over here for Mary Epler. That was a good second last out. Stepping up to the 16,000 two life. Mm -hmm. Now a little drop to the 10,000 two life. That should be all it takes to get this Harlan's Holiday Philly to the winner's circle. Joan Rosado will ride. This is her third off the layoff. She's probably sitting on mm -hmm. her best effort right right today here, the four holiday magician. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she might be gone here for, for 10. Somebody try to roll over to Timoni with sure. a turnaround. Maybe they run a three in life over there. But uh, I, I like the rides. Uh, Rosado's gotten along with this Philly quite well. Little issue early and made a nice move saving ground. Got clear. Ginger Russ just a little too good last time out. The numbers are strong. Third place finisher off of that last race, July 26th, just missed for the $15,000 level the other night at Penn National. Cresses right. ran a 56. So 
there's nobody in here that runs that, that those kind of figs. So he's, he's just kind of got a hold for him. Uh, the three is the stranger, though. Uh, only run a 35. A couple buyers down there at Tampa. Moving into a barn, though, that's about 18, 20%. First time on the barn change. I like the new face to run underneath of the favorite. All right, so we're all over Holiday Magician there in race seven. I key on her. Keith keys on her uh, on our multi-race tickets. Race okay. eight going to kick off the final pick three of the day. We're going five and a half furlongs on the Fort Marcy turf course. Rail at 87 feet, claiming 16,000 for three-year-old fillies or older Philly mares. Never won three. My price play mm -hmm. of the day here on the outside, the 10, my vixen, for right. trainer Gary Capuano cutting back in distance today, going from a route to a sprint. Gary's 18% with that move with a positive ROI. You get a good rider like Victor Carrasco, who won on this mare two starts ago uh, at the $16,000 two life level. Uh, maybe didn't like, showed speed last out on a yielding turf course and then and then uh, steadied at the 16th pole mm -hmm. and, and, and packed it. And I, I like this move today. I think the 10, my vixen, is gonna be locked and loaded for a late rally on the outside. Yeah, she doesn't have nearly the speed as some of these other Phillies and mares in this race. There's plenty of it. Maybe the favorite just kind of runs the speed in the ground, shakes clear, and holds on for dear life at a short price. Why, you ask? Only negative here. Uh, Ferries, 0 for 8, allowance to claiming the right. last the last couple of years. So I, I think there's a little vulnerability in that favorite. I go to the one, Marie for Paris. Uh, hasn't run a bad race at all on the turf for trainer Mary Epler. Came back with a vengeance from January to July. Perfect trip, kind of sat up there, made a tactical move, opened up the whole sway over Saturday's rain, who came flying at six furlongs uh, the other day. I, I think this horse just has to improve a little bit more, and I think she can to upset. I, I, on my uh, pick six ticket, I only used a five and a ten, but if you're playing a deeper ticket, absolutely mm -hmm. the one, Marie from Perea. A closing sprinter, so Torres is going to have to navigate a good yeah. trip, breaking from the one hole, uh, but that was a big, good-looking debut coming uh, off the layoff. They bet her down to the favor, and she ran – she ran to her, to her odds uh, that day. So we both like the one, Marie from Paris. I didn't use the four. You have the four there. Uh, Dona Alba from the mm -hmm. Noah Abramson Barn, Weston Hamilton on this mare who uh, had a nice win on the turf three starts ago back in early J June coming off the layoff. Yeah, and you've got to go on the way back uh, to find that sprint. I, I think this horse is going to have an effective kick uh, today. I think she can make a strong run back at the fairgrounds in March of 17, made a good little run. And you know friends, rider change. We're going to go from yeah. Cassidy Berg uh, to Gavin Gomez on the nine, and, and she's another one. I think this race, speed, some of the speed's going to come back. They're not all going to hang around. Some, I think only one speed lasts. Then look, it's like, look for the closers, maybe your 10, the one clearly for me, the four and the nine, you know, friends, I think can definitely uh, make a run into this group. Yeah, big, big rider change there. Big, big going, going mm -hmm. from a rider to just uh, doesn't win much to one, one of our top riders here yeah. with Kevin Gomez on the nine, you know, friends. All right, we have a couple of video spotlights for the late daily double race nine, a nice two other than allowance feature of the day to kick off the late daily double. Philly and Mayors three and up here, five and a half furlongs on the bowl game turf course rail at 17 feet. We have a video spotlight on the two summer frock. I didn't use this Philly, uh, but uh, Kevin Gomez rides for Ali Figgins. Here's the race from last October mm -hmm. here at Laurel. Yeah, and this was an open 20. It's a pretty salty little group here. And summer frock was very keen to go the whole way. Shifted out. Watch this move. Full of run past the eighth pole. I own Berlin on the lead. Summer Fox is, yeah, I'm going to take you on right here and say see you later. Opens up uh, three lengths and some change. You know, striding out nicely. Same kind of move in the in the in the fall, September. Ran a Mountaineer, gets a buyer 68, came back and popped that 79. All right, now we're back. Now we're off of a Mountaineer try, yep. a good one. And you say, yeah, you know, Mountaineer races. Well, I, I'm not a huge fan of all the races there, but the Walking Princess, the Philly, the beater, she's won four in a row now. So she's right. a pretty much a crack sprinter over that surface. Uh, elevated. Numbers last time the same situation. I think Summer Frock uh, at a price here gets the same kind of trip just that you just saw. We'll kind of draft up to the inside, look for room coming to mid stretch and go on by. I, I gave her a couple looks. Looks I wanted to use her, just couldn't get to her. This will be her third race off the layoff this summer. 
Might be sitting on a real big effort. I have the five on top here. Elusive Joni for Gary okay. Capuano. Gary Cap, uh, he's kind of key to my pick six today. Uh, he has one of the favorites. I like him uh, mm -hmm. with a price play earlier and one of the favorites here with Elusive Joni. Alex Centron is going to ride this mare today. She's a two-time winner on the Laurel Grass. Her last time on the turf sprinting at Delaware back in early July. A good third that day. And then they ran her on the main track when it came off the turf last out. They wanted to make sure they got in this last turf race, and they did. She ran good on the dirt mm -hmm. uh, last out. She's a four-time winner on the yeah. on the uh, turf. She's made over 156000 I I just was looking for a reliable, uh, hopefully a reliable single for strong connections here in race nine. So I key on the five elusive Joni. Okay. If she can regain that form she had last spring at four, she quite hasn't quite come back right. uh, like she once was there. Boy, she put together a string of race. Look at that, 84, 87, 87. Loose, everything lovely. Sunny, Sammy, the very that's some good horses. Yep. I, I I really liked her. Uh, was it three races back? She didn't fire at all. Little optimism off of her last two stand. I think she's ready. To, she paired up those seventy three. She should move up uh, off of that uh, fly for for Showenthal. Got the money. Uh, it was Sunny inspired in the stake yesterday. Yep. Fly first time blinkers uh, on the grass. She's going to be fine. And maybe she needs a little bit more focus. She didn't quite get going until very late, two races back, uh, out of a key race. She's going to be fine in here. Yep, she'll make a run. All right, we both like the 10 uh, fly. The 1A finding perfection uh, stay, stays in. They're both, uh, both parts of uh -huh. the entry are in. Uh, rider change in the 1A finding perfection make the rider Sheldon Russell. I used a plain one, do what I say, Pimentel mm -hmm. on this mare for Mike Trombetta. Uh, she's been running against uh, Stakes Company in her last two, her last race at this level back in May. A good second behind Keep Your Distance. Uh, Pimentel's going to have to navigate a, a, a trip coming from behind on this filly breaking from the inside. We've seen this move before. I will not get beat by her. I mean, I'm going to use her in some exact boxes and right. some, you know, multi-race wages because – this merit, she's just kind of done this before where she just runs bad. A couple races, and all of a sudden, here comes a race out of nowhere, and she makes a big run off the pace. She had perfect position June 23rd and just flattened out through the stretch. But look at it. Front bandage is on. Maybe come back to the pad, come down to the paddock and see. You know, will the bandages come off today? Sure. And yeah, that's not a move. He doesn't run a lot of horses in bandages, Trombetta. Okay. And, uh, you know, see, see if they're off today. She's certainly capable in her best to beat this field. All right, so we like some uh, some, some of the same mm -hmm. horses there. Throw the in, four in, in there, race. too, Stan. This yeah. is another one. You Jacqueline look at a Brady. Davis. Yeah, Jackie Davis, Thomas Smith, high percentage trainer, doesn't run a lot of horses. Limehouse is the stallion. They run on anything yeah. uh, when you break it down. I looked at the mare. Uh, she's all right. She's produced three turf-winning uh, turf foals. So, and this horse has been competitive in two other than company. All right, you get a nice price there on the four mile end. So a nice two other than allowance feature sprinting on the turf there in the ninth race. We both spread deep on our multi-race tickets in race 10 as Kid Jeter is going to be a vulnerable favorite. We, we both toss them all together <laughs> in our in our top four. Now you, are you, I, you know, I, I lay him in there third. In, in there, but I, I use them on my pick six ticket. He'll be one of the favorites here in race 10 going six furlongs on the Fort Marcy mm -hmm. rail at 87 feet, claiming uh, 16,003 and up. Never won two lifetime. We both like the six here, City Gold. A good third mm -hmm. against Starter Allowance Company. Two back, first off wow. to claim for Kieran McGee. Angel Serpo will ride. It's an easier spot today for the six City Gold. He runs back that race that he did July 8th, and I, I think he's one of your horses to beat here in the last race. Just dead game that day. I mean, nearly pulled a huge upset for a barn that you rarely get 26-1 to 1 on. Yeah, uh, just beating what a neck and a head. I actually thought he was going to battle back, leaving the 16th pole and get it done. But City Gold, strong try. That was first off the claim for Kieran. Then tried the dirt back to the turf. Not a lot of quality speed in this race. I think he's going to go ahead and set sail again. But we got a video spotlight of yep. uh, of the seven. My top selection here. I ain't never from his maiden breaking score on August the 11th. Boy. Looked really good on the track. He caught my eye uh, in, the, in the post parade, and he didn't let us down here through the race. Look at it, just a ton of horse. Carrasco moving up behind rivals, almost had to steady lightly there at the 5 16th and shifts out and just wins going away by four. The light bulb, as we talk about, we use that phrase a lot, just has gone on his last couple races. It was an emphatic score breaking this maiden. I, I think he's going to be keyed up again. I think he can move up off of that race and take yep. a stalking uh, little trip off of the six. 
and try to get by him the last 16th of a mile. Uh, he, he's moving in the right direction here for Hammy Smith. All right, so we both like the 6 and the 7. You have the 11, Kid Jeter, mm -hmm. in the mix. First off the claim now. Now in the Mark Reed bar in this 5-year-old son of lemon drop. Kid's been a beaten favored the last three races. His last race at this level. Reed waits for 30 days, yeah. goes right back in here for 16,000. They get five pounds off with the apprentice Weston Hamilton. Watch us, uh, watch us knock Kid Jeter right into the end of the yeah. winner's circle uh, to close uh, out the meet. And if he wins with a wide trip throughout, I'll be shocked. He, he gets outside of horses and likes to hang late. Right, right. I, I think Weston's going to have to draft him in a little bit and keep him covered up. And as we talked about time and time again with the horses with this kind of running style, you do have to fool them, Stan, I I into winning. They kind of just give them that one little burst, and suddenly they're by. Right. But then if horses come back to them, you move too soon, they, they, they want to hang a little bit, right? He's going to be an awfully short price in that 5-2, to 2-1 two, two to one range, but you've got to – You've got you got a spread in here. I like the two jammer, your old your old buddy oh, jammer. jammer. Yeah, I, I've got him in my in my pick four. Yep, yeah, he, he ran decent last time. He was mm -hmm. bumped at the start, came wide. Now he gets an extra half a furlong mm -hmm. today. Uh, six furlongs going to be right up Jammer's Alley, I think. And today. that was another race for the speed. I'm pretty sure it was one two around the racetrack. Right. He needs a little bit more help uh, to enhance his run. Yeah, seven six eleven five Disco Express for Trombetta. Uh, third time off of a break. It was a horse that broke its maiden in its debut at Pimlico. I'm not going to let this horse beat me and even yeah. the first off the claim there right. for, for Dorothy Ward. Now, that's a very interesting race, race number 10 that closes out the summer meet. All right, hope you're live and all your will pays going into race 10. It's mandatory payout today on our closing day of the summer meet. Beautiful weather, Sunday brunch cooking up there mm -hmm. in the Garden Terrace. Over 18,000 in that pick six. Mandatory payout pick six. That starts in race five. There's Dale Capuano. He's red hot. He had a three-bagger yesterday. He's going to finish off the summer meet in fine fashion. TK Kugler from Wasabi. He's here for closing day. All the big players yeah. looking for some uh, mandatory payout money here on our closing day of the summer meet. All right, good luck to you. Maybe we'll see they you can the pass PC. us a couple hundred bucks or something to get started, <laughs> yeah. you know. They've got the money the last couple little weeks. Yeah. A little steak money. Yeah. All right, Dave Robin, he's coming up next with Scratches and Changes. Good luck. Good luck.